Today I'm going to show you how to create a procedural dirt and or mud texture. It's not the easiest way to create dirt and it might be a little overkill in scenes where you have a particle system covering most of the mesh, but I wanted to explore some options in creating a realistic dirt surface without the use of image textures. So this is a node setup. It's not too, too bad. I should also mention that I have a Patreon and Gumroad if you want to support me. I really don't mention them that often and I should uh, because if people support me on those platforms, I'm able to allocate a lot more time to these tutorials. And uh, right now I have lots of ideas for future tutorials. The biggest hurdle for me is, uh, you know, free time. Anyways, uh, let's get to our scene here. To set up our scene, I'm going to get rid of this light and this cube and bring in a plane. Then I'm going to change the whole middle area to my shader editor and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. Hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. I'm going to change the top right to my 3D viewport and make this a little larger so I can see it better. And scroll in. Uh, hold down Z and move your mouse up, and you'll be in rendered mode. Let's change to the Cycles Render Engine, and change to Experimental and GPU Compute if you have it. Uh, I changed to Experimental because I want to do some adaptive subdivision. You don't necessarily need to do adaptive subdivision, but in order to have it as an option, you need to have Experimental selected. Things are a little dark since we took out our light, so I'm going to bring in an HDRI. I'm going to go to the World Properties and click on this yellow circle next to Color and select Environment Texture, and then click Open. Navigate to where you've got some HDRIs. I've got some free ones from HDRIHaven.com, and I'm going to select Lakeside 1K. So bring that in. You can see it's in the background there. I want to rotate it a little bit as well, so um, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, I'm going to go up to the top left and select World. And if I click on Lakeside 1K, I can hit Control t and that's a Node Wrangler shortcut. So if that doesn't work, you just need to enable Node Wrangler in the preferences. And I'm going to come to the mapping node, and where it says Z rotation, I'm going to enter in 190. So uh, basically what this does is if we're looking at it from the front, my light is now to the left here. So that's uh, usually how I like working with a lot of flat materials, just the light kind of behind and to the side. I'm going to come down to where it says Ray Visibility and unclick Camera. And that's going to make uh, it so that the HDRI isn't visible, but it still continues to light my scene, which is nice. Then I'm going to come up to the top left and change this to Object, so we can see our material once again. To displace our mesh, I'm going to use a combination of modifiers and stuff in the shader editor. Uh, the big details I'm going to use modifiers for, because if I do that in the shader editor and I decide to use a particle system, it's not really going to uh, work correctly. So I'm going to come down to the modifiers panel and I'm going to first add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to turn this to simple and I'm going to have these both at six if your computer can handle it. If not, you can turn it down. It's not necessary to have it so high. Then I'm going to bring in a displace modifier and I'm going to click the new button here and uh, click this button right over here. This will bring you to the textures panel and then click blend or pardon me clouds and we're going to set the size to 1.1 so we can see the size here and also I should make sure we're uh, shading smooth so hit W or right click to bring up this context menu and just click shade smooth. I'm going to go back to the modifiers panel and adjust the strength value to 0.1 so now it's much more subtle uh, you can see it's just slightly curving our mesh there. I'm going to add one more displace modifier and uh, this one here I'm going to click new again and then go to the textures panel. And this time the size, we're going to set a little smaller. We're going to go point, uh, point 0.1, just like that. And let's go back to the modifiers panel. Let's decrease that strength to point 0.01. So it's really small. This one's even more subtle. It's hard to really see at this point. Uh, it'll be more visible when we start adding more, more colors and textures. I'm going to name this first texture uh, right here. This is going to be large bumps. And then I'm going to name this second texture small bumps, just so I can keep track of them. This next part is kind of up to you. Uh, I'm going to add one more subdivision surface modifier here. It's not necessary, especially if you have a particle system covering most of this here. But if you have a lot of exposed mesh where you want to see details on the dirt, I found I got my best renders with either two or three for the render, or even adaptive subdivision if your computer can handle it. This looks the best right here, but uh, if you're in an animation, I wouldn't recommend this as much because based on where the camera is, it'll change uh, the adaptive subdivision each time. So it looks a little weird when you move your camera. 
I'm going to start off by bringing in a texture coordinate node and just control shift left click to get that viewer node going. And I'm going to bring in a noise texture, place it right here. Let's come out of the factor and I'm going to bring in a color ramp, which uh, I want to replace it with a map range node. But let's set up with a color ramp first and then I'll do it afterwards. I'm going to grab this bottom flag here and put it at 0.5. I'm going to bring in a map range node, like I said, uh, to replace this color ramp. It's going to be a bit better. Uh, for render times, uses less memory. Uh, basically, this black slider, we would put that right here, so 0.5. Any changes to this white slider, we would put right here. And if we changed the value of this black here, let's let's say we changed it to gray, we would take this value right here, 0.171, we would put it right here. Same thing with the white, we would put it right here. That's why this is zero right now, zero just means black. So I'm gonna change this back to black. And let's change this from mid, or from min, to 0.5, and now we see we get the same result. So let's get rid of this color ramp. We'll use this map range node. I'm gonna bring in a mix RGB, and I'll just place it right here. This is actually gonna go into the factor, and then I'm gonna bring in another noise texture. Why don't I just duplicate this one? And uh, we will run this into the bottom color, color two, from color right here. For this top noise, I'm gonna set the scale to one, and the detail to three, and then the roughness to one. And for this bottom noise texture, I'm gonna set this to 40 for the scale and four for the detail. Then I'm gonna to come to this mix RGB and I'm gonna change this color one. Uh, the hex value is gonna be um, A6, A6, A6. I'm gonna duplicate this map range node and just place it right here. We're gonna change this to 0.4 instead of 0.5. So we start to get these details uh, in random spots over our mesh. Let's move this stuff over a little bit. And I'm gonna bring in a displacement node, place it right here, and we're gonna feed this into the height. And I now realize I forgot one step here as well. Let's go down to this uh, material properties here and down to settings. And we need to change it from bump only to displacement and bump. And now it's actually gonna displace our mesh properly if we plug this into displacement here. I'm gonna turn the mid-level to you know a much lower number. I found 0.09 worked pretty well. And I'm gonna change this uh, displacement to 0.1. So it's really not a lot of displacement coming from here. And I'm gonna check out this guy here. You can kind of see these you know interesting small shapes appearing in a couple places on our uh, mesh there. If we wanted to turn that up, we would decrease this number right here. And uh, if we wanted to turn it down, I found 0.5, right? 0.55 worked pretty well. Any higher than that, and there's really not a lot of detail, uh, but you could go down to 0.3, and you can see you know, it starts to look really bumpy. I'm gonna go up to 0.5, and let's go ahead and duplicate all of this. I'm gonna move it all the way down here. Uh, let's just reposition this. Actually, I'll move it up a little bit. And we're gonna change some stuff around here. For this first noise texture, why don't we change this to 4D, and I'll change this W value to 0.2, I'll change the scale to two and the detail I'm going to change to one. The roughness is going to be 0.5, which is the default there. Then this noise texture down here, we're going to keep it at 40 and four and 0.5. So that one's not going to change. This map range will change this to 0.4 and everything else will leave the same. And same with this hex, uh, we'll have this at A6, A6, A6. Let's take a look at this map range, and we're gonna adjust this from min to 0.4, or 0.44, and this from max to 0.37. And then we'll leave the other two as the same. We can see, uh, you know, this one up here, it's these white areas on black. This is gonna be black areas on white or kind of gray. So this is gonna go down, whereas this one went up. I'm gonna bring in a math node, and I'll just place it right here. We're just gonna add these two together. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll duplicate this add and change this to multiply. And I'll put this on both of these branches just so we can control the relative strength of each of these paths. I'm gonna change the top one to one and the bottom one is gonna be at 0.8. So let's see what that looks like. That looks a little strong for the bottom path here. So I'm gonna change this to 0.1 on that multiply instead. And that looks much better. This last step is gonna be pretty subtle for the displacement. I want to make some uh, bumpy areas in here that are just very small. So I'm going to grab another noise texture 
why don't I just duplicate this? But I'll do it with uh, Control Shift D, so it duplicates it while remaining attached. And uh, let's check out the factor output. We'll set the detail to six, the or pardon me, scale to six, and detail to six. And then let's duplicate this guy with Control Shift D. We'll set the noise scale to two on this one, and we'll just return the rest of the uh, settings to the default. So two for the detail and 0.5 for the roughness. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB and place it right here. And uh, this is going to go into color run one, just like it is there. So that's perfect. And this hex code should be BC, BC, BC. And then I'm going to bring in a map range node to attach to uh, the factor of this noise texture output. I'm going to set the from min to 0.46, the from max to 0.58, uh, the two min I'm going to leave the same, and the two max I'm going to set to 0.6. And then let's plug that into the factor on this mix RGB here. We can see it's just some slight bump in some areas there. Let's add this to our displacement up here. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, pretty interesting. I'm going to dial this back a little bit with a multiply node. Let's set this to 0.2. I like the look of that. You can play around with this value, get different results. Let's take a look at the color now. I'm going to come out of object again, and this time I'm going to go into a Musgrave node. So let's put that right here, and let's change the scale to 10, the detail to 6, the dimension to 0.1, and the lacunarity to 3. So we get this kind of gritty texture. The most important parts here, lack, or dimension should be pretty low, not zero. Dimension, or detail should be a little higher, and lacunarity a little higher, not too high. Let's bring in a map range node place it right here and I'm going to set the from min to 1 the from max to 0.8 and uh, I'll leave the other two settings as is so we just get these uh, kind of splotchy gritty black areas there I'd like to mix this with this height map that I've created down here so to do that I'm just going to use a multiply node just do it quickly like this and just see what the result looks like you can change it if I want but that looks pretty cool right there why don't we use that and let's feed it into a color ramp I'm going to use a color ramp this time because, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to use more than two flags. And I'm also going to use colors to feed it into the base color on my principled BSDF here. This is what my color ramp looked like in the original project. Just some different browns uh, with kind of a reddish-orange tinge to them, you know, different levels of uh, darkness there. And to do that, uh, I did a similar process to what I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to open up an image editor window right here. And I've got a reference image for some dirt. Now you can use whatever image you want. And I'm going to hover over this color ramp, over this spot right here, and hit E. And then I can have uh, this color picker tool and do a really short uh, color pick, just like this. So this gives us some idea. I'm going to turn down the roughness as well, or turn up the roughness, pardon me, just so we get more of kind of a dirt texture. Uh, this looks a little bit better. I'm really happy with this so far, so I'm not going to worry about it. But, you know, do this as many times as you want. Uh, I'm going to close this up and uh, continue forward from here. I'll get rid of this other color ramp. The last step is I'm gonna make a roughness map. And I find this is one of the most important steps to kind of know where the, the light is coming from and just be able to uh, compare different angles with this part. So I'm gonna use this add here, just um, the output for our height map and feed it into a map range node. And then I'll plug this into our roughness right here. We can see as a default, it's very, shiny so if we bring up this to min to maybe to 0.8 that looks pretty good the lower stuff down is going to be a bit wetter and the higher stuff up is going to be more rough more dry so that's kind of what i tried to do we could lower this down if we want you know more wet mud but uh yeah this is a uh, pretty good here i'm just going to turn this up to 0.8 I'm going to hold down shift and right click and drag through all of these lines so I can create a reroute point there. And I'm going to grab everything except for this first node and this last node and hit control G so I can create a group node. I'm going to bring this stuff together a little bit. And uh, let's just fix this so that it's not backwards. I'm going to replace these guys here so that it's the right way around, no crossover. I'm going to click on this node group and hit tab to go inside here. Let's figure out what parameters we want to ex uh, expose here. So first of all, I'm thinking this from min right here is going to be the amount of uh, 
raised details. And this from min right here is going to be the amount of lowered details. And then this multiply is going to be the height of raised details. And this multiply is going to be the height of the lowered details. And this multiply is going to be the height of kind of that soft detail that we have everywhere. So if we tab out of here, we can see they're all set there. They don't have uh, good names yet, so let's rename them. I'm going to go up to the group. And this one here is going to be the raised detail amount. This one here, lowered detail amount. This one here is the raised detail height, lowered detail height. And this is, oh, got to scroll down. This is the small or subtle detail height. Okay, there we go. So now if we tab out of here, we can you know, hit end there. And then we can adjust all these guys here. Um, I shouldn't do it so much. But if we want to lower this down, then we get even more of that raised detail. If we want to lower this down, we get even more of that lower detail. Um, so stuff to play around with. Then we can play around with the influences of each one as well. This is the raised detail. So if we bring this up, that's going to be more pronounced. And uh, you know, same thing with this lower detail. Probably want to click through this slower though, because that seems to be much more sensitive. Same thing with this subtle detail. We could bring this up if we wanted. Let's also add in a parameter for the overall displacement. So I'm just going to drag this over to the scale here. Uh, just tab out. Actually, I need to tab in. And uh, let's go here. Let's call this disp scale. That's probably good. And now we can see if we adjust that, you know, it's the overall scale of everything added together. Just a reminder, though, if you do adjust this displacement scale here, um, I would not do it too much because you want the heavy lifting to be done by these displacement textures in your modifiers panel. Otherwise, like I said, uh, your particle system probably won't work so well. OK, that's it for today. Hope that was easy to follow. But if you're confused, feel free to ask questions. Special thanks to my patrons, Jason Ferguson and Chris Nam. You guys rock. Thanks for watching.